The consequences of this verdict cannot be overstated. This goes far beyond the 2024 presidential election, but will be discussed and debated for years to come. I'm joined now by the best political and legal team in the business. Major Garrett is our CBS chief Washington correspondent. Jan Crawford, our chief legal correspondent. But let's start with Caroline Polisi, criminal defense attorney. Caroline, first, does the defense have grounds for appeal? Absolutely, Nora. Um, there are a lot of meritorious issues here, not the least of which is really the, the law, the statute on which uh, the district attorney brought this case. Remember, we have talked for weeks now about the unique nature of what they had to prove in that this was a misdemeanor offense that they bumped up to a felony with another misdemeanor, the conspiracy to violate state election laws and the unlawful means through which that conspiracy was achieved. The state did not have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, nor did the jury need to be unanimous with respect to what they thought the unlawful means were. To be clear, they were unanimous with respect to every element of the charged offense here, but I think you will see some due process issues being raised on appeal. And Caroline, Donald Trump is a 77-year-old first-time offender in the eyes of the New York court system. Judge Mershon has a great deal of discretion. Do you think he'll sentence Donald Trump to prison? I do not, Nora. Uh, for better or for worse, he is being treated not above the law, just as any other New Yorker would be in this situation. The fact is the vast majority of defendants that are sentenced under this statute do not serve prison time. It is on the table up to four years. However, I do not see uh, Judge Mershon imposing prison sentence in this instance because he is a first-time offender. It's a nonviolent offense. And the fact is that most uh, defendants in his position would not be sentenced to prison time. And Caroline, we do know that a convicted felon can become president of the United States, but how could probation complicate his campaigning? It could complicate things quite a bit. If he is placed on um, you know, specific probation, he will have to sign off with his probation officer to uh, on his travel plans. And that likely is not something that the former president is used to. But again, just as I said, he will have to partake in this system just as any other criminal defendant would. Caroline Polisi, thank you for your expertise. Let's now bring in Major and Jan. I mean, Major, this was a legal issue today, but we can't underestimate the political repercussions. Words really fail us, Nora. There's nothing you can say or Jan can say or I can say that can adequately capture the gravity of this moment. This is terrain the country has never before seen. And it's going to create for the 2024 campaign a question never before asked. Why are we here? Former President Trump will say we are here because there is a system arrayed against one person in America and one person only, me. And he will use that grievance to say to a wide swath of this country, if not for this system, he calls it the deep state, or some Democrats or enemies, or sometimes vermin, I would never be in this position. The another part of that question will be, wait a minute, doesn't your conduct have something to do with this? Doesn't your conduct, former President Trump, have something to do with why we are going through all of these stomach-turning legal problems, whether it's January 6th, classified documents, a conspiracy to hide information, buy and sell stories favorable to you in 2016? Isn't it your conduct that is central to why we are going through all these shockwaves to our institutions? That is going to be a question asked and answered in a way we've never had in a presidential campaign before. But Donald Trump said this will ultimately de be decided at the ballot box. Precisely. The country will decide, will render a verdict politically on that central question. Why are we here? And Jan Crawford, we don't know yet whether this is the only criminal trial that Donald Trump will face this year. It's likely it could be. But there are some issues before the Supreme Court, and we could get a decision in June. Tell us about that. Well, those are two of the cases before the court now involving former President Trump, and they go to whether or not and how he can be prosecuted for his actions around January 6 and his efforts to allegedly obstruct the 2020 election. Of course, special counsel Jack Smith has charged uh, former President Trump and is seeking to prosecute him and has asked the Supreme Court for a decision in that case uh, in June so he can try it potentially before the election. The issue is whether uh, Trump is immune from prosecution. I don't think, based on the arguments, the Supreme Court will say he is. But I do think this verdict today and this conviction uh, 
lessens the pressure on the Supreme Court in those cases because there is a compressed timeline. Everyone wanted the court to hurry up and decide, hurry up and decide, get this decision out so Trump can be prosecuted before the election. Jack Smith can prosecute Trump anytime in December when he's in jail if he were to go to jail, for example. So now that the opponents of President Trump and Democrats have gotten a conviction that they wanted, this will alleviate, I think, some of the pressure uh, on the Supreme Court to, you know, turn this quickly. But I think that decision will still come by the end of June. Whether we have a trial in that case before November, uh, I think that was probably unlikely in any event, but it's less significant with this conviction now. Supreme Court in June, the sentencing July 11th, the Republican convention July 15th, the Democrats convention in August. It will be quite a summer. Oh, by the way, Nora, the president's son on trial starting Monday. A the lot. president's son on trial starting Monday, a former president convicted on the Thursday before. We are in brand new space, America. We will be watching. Thanks to both of you.